Here are the top 10 things to do when you get bored playing Clash Royale. The other day I was watching a Havoc gaming video and he made a video on the top 10 things to do when you get bored playing Clash of Clans. So I'm like, we definitely need one of these for Clash Royale because they both get bland over time. That seems to be an issue with Supercell games that they're really fun for a little bit, but after time they get pretty monotonous. So I decided to make a list of 10 things to do when that starts setting in for you. Make sure to stick around till the end because the last few are definitely worth waiting for. And number 10 is to play some no-skill decks. These decks would include stuff like E-Giant, Golem, Royal Recruit. Like the other day, we put a poll up on our YouTube channel. And it was pretty clear that everyone thinks that E-Giant is by far the lowest skill deck in the game. When you could just drop your win condition down, have it defend, just tornado anything in sight to, um, into its radius, and just automatically win the game. I mean, you, you don't really have to think. You could be watching TV. You could be talking to your girlfriend. I don't know, take a dog for a walk. It, it doesn't really matter. You're going to win some games, and, and it'll just keep you engaged in the game, which is something that's really important with games like this. And number nine is to make a second account. I think this is something that everyone that gets higher up in the game needs to do because it brings you back to what Clash Royale is really about. I mean Clash Royale is fun when you're grinding, when you're first going through all the levels of the trophy road, when you're unlocking cards. It, it, it just brings excitement to the game. Like I don't get excited when I get a monk card anymore and that's one of the biggest deals in the world. When you start a second account you can go beat up some bums down in low ladder. Or you can just be like Riley and just go absolutely ape and have three accounts in the top 10 in the world. I mean, I don't know. I don't think anyone's good enough to do that, but you can try. And number eight is to play some 2v2 with your friends. That's something that we tend to forget a lot about in the more competitive side of the community. And I mean, if you're playing with one of your friends and they're not as good, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't count for anything. Like me and Lucid play all the time. We just clone giant skeletons, skeleton barrels, all that stuff. And we just up some bum. It's so much fun. We'll win like 20 in a row. I mean, that's something you can do too. As long as you're a little bit more skilled than everyone else, it's one of the most enjoyable things to do in the game. And number seven is to win a grand challenge. I know this seems far-fetched for most players to do, but if you can win about six out of ten classic challenges, you can get lucky and eventually win one. Not only will you get a really cool badge on your profile, but also you might get to see some players that you normally never would have got to play against. Like those players at top ladder, when they're not wanting to play ladder, they're playing in grand challenges. Or your favorite YouTubers. Like, you can go f*** up Sir Tag. It'll be great. You can post a screenshot on Reddit, and I don't know, you'll get two upvotes. It'll be really cool. And number six is to try to make new variants for your deck. This could mean multiple things from finding new support troops to use in your deck or to find a new deck overall. For example, I used a Witch Graveyard Freeze deck for a very long time and it was important to me that I was using a deck that was my own. Like no one else used that deck unless someone randomly copied me. But it, it just makes it a little bit more personal. For example, you guys that use Mega Knight Hog Rider Witch in mid ladder, you, you guys can find some kind of crazy bowler deck or something along those lines. Just make it more personalized to you and it'll mean more to you in the long term. And number five is to practice bad win conditions. This can be for multiple reasons, just because it's more of a challenge or you're just waiting for that buff to eventually come and you're gonna be first in line. Right now, I'd say the worst win condition is probably three musketeers and then probably giant goblin, goblin giant, whatever the f you wanna call it. Eventually, I would assume a buff is going to come. And when it does come, you are going to be right in front. You're going to know how to play them and maybe you'll get to the top of the ladder. Maybe you'll get to a new high for you and it'll just be a really fun and easy time. And number four is to work on masteries. There are some very fucking difficult masteries. For example, the ice school of damage one. Like, how the hell are you gonna do that much damage to stuff? I don't know. You can spend your whole life doing that one and I mean, that's what you can do when you get bored. Also, the Inferno Dragon damage one. You have to lock on and do max damage so many times with that Inferno Dragon. You're, you're going to have to play so many games, but it's definitely something very easy and fun that you can do when you're bored. It'll also give you really cool exclusive badges that most people don't have. Even top players probably don't have them if they don't play with them. That'll be something cool that you can show off on your profile. And number three is to actually play your Clan Wars. I am a very bad culprit of this that I usually don't show up to Clan Wars, and I know most people don't. But it just adds an interesting element that you don't normally get. You get to play duels, so if you lose the first game and they talk mad crap, you can absolutely destroy them the next two games, and it'll feel absolutely great when you BM them at the end of that third game. Absolutely spectacular. And number two is to either watch TV Royale or some smaller YouTubers. There usually is a bigger problem with watching bigger YouTubers because they're usually just super cell sims. I personally don't enjoy it, but you can still watch them. Then again, you get some more variety if you watch some smaller YouTubers. Like top TV Royale, you get to see the top players. But also, these, some of these smaller YouTubers are more in the average player skill range, which is something that I think is very important. You can watch those top players because it's sometimes just hilarious to watch Riley or Ian play because they're just like, 
crazy good at this game and they sound like robots talking. It's hilarious. But then you get some streamers that are more in the average player skill range. Like we're still good, like I'm probably included in that range, but it isn't just out of this world that we're gonna be so much better that what we do is never going to be something that you're gonna be able to do. It, it's just more realistic. And number one is to get a thousand ramp up wins. For anyone that didn't know, we did a video a couple weeks ago on what the rarest badges in Clash Royale are. And the rarest badge and the only badge that no one has ever gotten is a thousand ramp up wins. So I think it is important that someone from this channel's viewership gets that badge first, and if you tell us, you will get your own video about a thousand ramp up wins. <laughs>